Welcome back to Let's Go. So, as you go about your daily life, you're looking for ways to love the people the Lord has brought into your life. And you are listening carefully to them as they share their questions and concerns. Now, it is time to lead them to Jesus. How do you do this? Well, listen and learn as Professor Sam Degner shares some basics about evangelism and how telling Bible stories can be a great way to teach people about their Savior. There's a famous quote attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. It sounds profound. It reminds us that our actions send a message to the people around us. There are two problems with the quote though. First, Francis never said it. Second, it's just plain wrong. You cannot preach the gospel without using words. We've been using the word evangelism throughout this course. It comes from a Greek word that means good news. To evangelize someone literally means to good news them, to tell them the good news about Jesus. Evangelism is verbal proclamation. You can say it, sing it, write it, or sign it, but to preach the gospel, you have to use words. You've heard how important it is to love those who don't know Jesus. You've learned how to listen to them and know their spiritual needs and earn their trust so you can address those needs. But if we stop there, we haven't evangelized anyone. You can't love anyone into heaven as much as we would like to. No matter how many good things you do for them, they will never know about the good thing Jesus did for them unless someone says something. And no one ever found salvation only because someone listened to them along the way. To evangelize means to tell the good news and that only happens with words. So, what words? Listen to how these Christians say it. The good news to me is um, that I have a Heavenly Father that loves me. I have the Holy Spirit that guides me and uh, that I can listen to for guidance. And then also that I have a loving Savior um, because I do need saving and I have a loving Savior that, that did for me what I could never do. So he took my place, the, the great exchange, he took my place opened his arms wide and died on the cross, and then continued the work by rising again on the third day. So that to me is the resurrection. That's the good news. The good news to me is the fact that Jesus died on the cross for me, for my sins, and that he declares me righteous before him. He declares me as his adopted child. One word, it is freedom. It is freedom from ourselves it is freedom for the the a, a new life in Christ and that freedom from is an idea that I am free from this idea that I have to live by the law and that I am trapped by shoulds and musts in life because deep down we all feel like we have to do something to appease God we have to do something for our salvation we have to contribute something. But the gospel frees me from that so that my motivation now is not what I have to do, what I must do, what I should do. It's what I can do. It is what I'm free to do. And that is a blessing that you, you understand only through what Christ did for us on the cross. They all expressed the gospel in their own words, but they all had something in common. They talked about Jesus. The good news is the message about Jesus. How God loved the world so much that he sent his son to save us. How Jesus was born into this world to do everything we were supposed to do so we would get credit for it. How he resisted temptation in our place. How he took our sins on himself and suffered for them. How he died our death and rose to prove that his work was finished. There are many ways to say it, so let's look at what the Bible says about it and how it says it. Did you notice? If you worked through the first part of the Bible study, you evangelized. You spoke the good news about Jesus. It's that simple. 
The gospel is a message you already know. It's the message the Spirit has planted in your heart. It's the good news you cherish. You can share it confidently with others because you know that it's powerful. You don't have to worry that you won't know what to say. You just proved that you do. Besides, there are lots of things you can use to help you remember. You could memorize a few Bible passages or read them with the person you want to evangelize. If you know the Apostles' Creed from saying it so often in church, you could use that as an outline to tell about Jesus, who is the Son of God, born of Mary, who suffered and died and rose again. You may even have a favorite song you could share that expresses the gospel clearly. There are lots of ways to proclaim the good news about Jesus. Right now, I'd like to talk about one specific way that I think you can do already. Consider this quote. The shortest distance between a human being and truth is a story. That's not from the Bible, but it expresses something that I think you'd agree with. There's something about a story that makes it a powerful way to communicate. I think it's fair to say Jesus knew this fact about humans, which is why he often chose to communicate divine truths with stories. Think about it. When he wanted to teach about love for our neighbors, he told the story of the Good Samaritan. When he wanted to teach us how God's kingdom grows, he told about a farmer planting seed. Stories are a powerful way to communicate. They work well to tell the good news about Jesus. The nice thing is that we don't have to make up the stories. We find plenty of them right in God's word. The Bible is a gold mine of stories that help us tell people about God's love for sinners. Listen to some of your fellow Christians talk about their favorites. I really like the story of um, the man who was crippled and couldn't walk and his friends lower him through the roof to see Jesus. That his friends would be so totally convinced that Jesus could do this for their friend, um, but that also that he had faith that he could be made well and that Jesus would have mercy on him too and, um, and not brush people aside, but just say, sure, I'll take care of it for you. Uh, my favorite Bible story is the one of King David. We hear about this uh, little man who wasn't too much thought about, uh, and he becomes this big hero. He's winning all these battles. God is delivering all of these armies into his hands. And what it reminds me of, someone who has a lot of success in life, uh, they kind of forget who led them there or how they got there. And that's when, you know, King David saw uh, his friend's wife. And then you kind of saw evilness kind of like take over him. He started like scheming, you know, to the point that, you know, he got his friend, his right hand man killed. Uh, in our world today, that's what greed does. That's what uh, success sometimes uh, does to people as well. And my favorite part of the story is when, you know, he is confronted by the prophet who is kind of explaining what he did. Immediately, King David seemed like he woke up, he said, well, this is crazy. Who, who is this? Let's go take care of this right now. And then the prophet said, hey, that's you. And I think that I like that story so much because I found myself in that position to where I'm thinking everything is okay, but I'm really not doing what I'm supposed to do. And it took someone on the outside to say, slow down for a minute, Ron. You need to look in the mirror. Now, pause the video and spend a few minutes completing the exercises for part two in your study guide. Remember the quote I shared at the beginning of this lesson? I'd like to tweak it. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words because it's necessary. To evangelize someone means to share the good news about Jesus. If you've made it through this lesson, you've already done that, at least twice. And you did so with little to no help. You already know the good news. That's what makes you a Christian. You can express it in your own words. You can also use the stories from Scripture to tell the good news. Stories you may have known from little on. God has equipped you to evangelize. And when you do, He promises that your message, His message, has the power to save. Can I share one more Bible story with you?
It's about a man who was a lot like me and you, a regular guy with a job and a family who also was a follower of Jesus. His name was Peter. He had learned a lot about Jesus in the three years he had known him. He knew Jesus was the Savior, the Son of God. He really wanted to be a faithful ambassador for Jesus. But when he had his chance, Peter failed. Jesus was on trial and someone asked Peter if he was with Jesus. He could have said proudly, yes, and explained why. But he buckled under the pressure. It was just a servant girl, but in that moment he was afraid. He let his Savior down. It tore him up inside. Maybe you can relate a little. You want to follow Jesus faithfully. You even want to tell others about him. But when the opportunity comes, it can seem so hard. And sometimes we buckle under the pressure. We're embarrassed. It's not like our life is on the line like Peter's may have been. We just don't want the conversation to get awkward or don't want to sound preachy or foolish or we're afraid we'll lose a friend. We let the moment pass quietly by and we're ashamed. Just three days after Peter's failure, he saw Jesus again. And what did Jesus, crucified and alive again, say? Peace be with you. Then he gave him his Holy Spirit and said, I am sending you. When he saw Peter again some days after that, he took him aside and personally asked him to feed his sheep, to teach others about him. It was as if Peter's failure, failure had never happened. Whatever guilt you may feel for the times you shied away from telling someone about Jesus, I'm here to tell you, let it go. Any failures of yours, all of them, were nailed to the cross and left there. Jesus doesn't think of them and you shouldn't either. Peace be with you. And if you're still a little nervous about evangelizing someone, let me tell you one more part of Peter's story. A few weeks later, on Pentecost, he stood up in front of a crowd of thousands of people in Jerusalem and preached. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and did not back down that day. He spoke the good news about Jesus and 3,000 people believed. Jesus has given you his Holy Spirit too. You probably won't preach to thousands and God doesn't promise that everyone who hears you will believe. But the Holy Spirit will make you bold to speak, even if it's an audience of one. And he will work through the message you proclaim. Go, Jesus is sending you. Leading people to the gospel is ultimately the goal of evangelism. Because only the gospel has the power to create saving faith in someone's soul. There is a myriad of ways to do this. Today, we learn the power of telling Bible stories. Next time, we will learn more about how we can lead lost souls to the saving gospel. See you then.